All right, there we go. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our first session of Ignite. So you guys are missing out if you are not here because we do have treats in true Keller Williams Downey fashion. Portos is here. And if we're going to play all out, if you can, turn your cameras on, right? Just like you were here, just like you were participating face-to-face. -face. Turn your cameras on if you can. I know some of you can't, um, but if you can, turn your cameras on. We want to see your beautiful faces um, just like you were here. And I do have my wonderful assistant, Jonathan, who is going to be uh, putting the, uh, the student manual in the chat so that you guys can download it and follow along, those of you who are on Zoom, okay? Um, so, Without further ado, I want to introduce myself. My name is Brandy Jones. I am the team leader here at KW Downey. Um, I have been in real estate now for 19 years. Um, I am going on my 20th year, 2025 will be my 20, 20th year. I'm super excited about that. Hello, welcome. Hi. And um, beautiful. You guys, if you could pass the sign-in sheet back down. Pass that back down there. Okay, perfect. I'm going to my 20th year in real estate. I have done quite a few things. I've been a previous team leader uh, at KW Whittier. Um, I have, I am I was a single agent. Um, I had a team, let the team go. Now I have a team again. Um, so I've done a little bit of everything when it comes to uh, real estate. I was the productivity coach uh, prior to taking on this position. I was a productivity coach here for four years. Um, so I have coached and I have trained. Um, and I love the coaching and the training. It's one of the things that I love best about um, the role is coaching and training, especially our new agents, uh, because they tend to have a lot of fire. They, they're ready to get started and they just need direction. Our middle level agents love them as well because they know what they're doing. And when I tell you that, if you've closed eight deals, you can double that like that. I mean, it. okay. If you have actually closed eight deals, it is easy to get to 16. But success is actually, I should say it's simple. Success is simple, not easy, right? Because there's a clear plan. But are you actually going to follow through with it? All right. That's the key. OK, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I average um, on average anywhere between 18 to 22 deals a year. Um, I do my business primarily by referral, repeat and referral business. And I would hope so since I've been in the business so long. Right. Um, I have done cold calling, door knocking, expires for sale by owners, um, NODs. I've done just about everything in this business uh, that you could possibly think of. Um, I am definitely an entrepreneur by nature. So um, I did, you know, I when I got in, I was ready to go. Um, so I am happy to be with Keller Williams. I've been with Keller Williams now for about 13 years. So um, I did start off at a little boutique because I thought I knew what I was doing and I thought I could do it myself and I didn't need all this education and high level training and all that good stuff. And I found out real estate is very different than any other industry that I've ever been in. So I did need the training. I did need the coaching. Um, and when I found Keller Williams, it was right on time um, because I was able to get right in, start the, the coaching and the training. Um, and that's when my business actually started to take off. So I'm definitely Kellerized here. However, this training is for anybody. I don't care if you're a part of Keller Williams or you're not. The principles are still the same, right? What to do to get business is still the same, whether you're KW or you're not, okay? So, hello. So, definitely, if you're not Keller, this is not about Keller. This is about you um, getting into business. So, I want to quickly um, go around the room and introduce, um, have everybody introduce yourself. Let us know who you are, how long you've been in business. And sign the sign-in sheet for me. And also let us know what you hope to accomplish from attending Ignite. Okay? So, sorry, we'll start with you. Uh, 
uh, my name is Marco. I've uh, been uh, in Northern real estate since 1997. Um, I've had my own firm um, when I retired. And uh, now I just go to a lot of clubs to be able to uh, upgrade your credit. And I deal with a lot of people uh, with brokers. I started as a mortgage broker, then eventually I moved to dealing with uh, agents. Okay. And uh, so now I'm here. Wonderful. Well, welcome, Marco. Hi. 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 Good. And what do you want to learn from this class? What do you want to take away? Um, the better ways to talk with uh, clients nice. and the follow-up. Okay. Better ways to talk with clients and follow-up. Yes. All righty. Hi, I'm Oscar. I've been about 10 years as property manager. The guy I work for retired. So I, I need to go to the People I knew told me that go, there's only, they said there's only two companies that train. It's either Berkshire or Keller. Mm. I went to both. And I thought Keller was by far much better. And, well, awesome. What do you want to get out of the class? I want to stop trying to convince people to buy and start finding people who are ready. Oh, good one. I love it. Stop trying to convince people to buy and find people who are ready to buy. Wonderful. Yeah. Kim. Hi, my name is Kim. Um, I've been an agent for about seven months. Um, this is a, this is going to be a second career for me. Um, and what I hope to get out of Ignite, um, just more information to be able to excel my business. Um, develop a plan that's successful and get more leads and do what we want to do. Okay. Okay, great. Get more leads, be able to have a, a successful business that I'm sure is sustainable, right? Not one of those that go up and down and up and down on what I call the real estate roller coaster. Successful. My name is Juan. I'm ready to real estate. Um, I come from healthcare full time. So I'm starting to kind of put my toes into the whole real estate game. Um, just trying to learn how to get this airplane going. Because when I, you know, I just got my license. So I'm just trying to figure trying to figure it out and try how to kind of get the momentum going. Sure. Um, so that's when hopefully looking forward to kind of ignite. Okay, absolutely. Yes. And all that is going to happen. Okay, so Bonnie, let's go. Introduce yourself, my dear. Come off mute and introduce yourself. My name is Bonnie. I am a new real estate agent. I what was the question you wanted me to answer? How long you said how long you've been in real estate and then what you hope to um get out of attending Ignite. Um, so I've been in the real estate game since November. That's when I passed my test and got my license. I went to a commercial brokerage, and then I ended up at Keller Williams due to, I knew Keller Williams had everything that I need here, all the training. I'm trying to be the little Brandy Jones apprentice. That's what I'm trying to get from Ignite. I'm trying to be the next Brandy Jones. I'm trying to close 18 to 20 deals. I'm trying to get all her energy, everything she knows. I'm trying to pick her brain. I want to be a fly on the wall. I want I to be a little her. <laughs> That's Bonnie, you are going to be the best you, my dear. I love it, though. Thank you. What a compliment. <laughs> All right. Who is that? Marisol Castro. Can you come off mute and introduce yourself? And I'm going to go fast if you guys, because some of them aren't really there. Ken, are you there? Can you come off mute and introduce yourself? Hello. 
Yes. Uh, hello. Yep. Go ahead, Ken. Okay. Um, I joined uh Keller William, uh mid to twenty twenty two. Uh, still learning. I think you're breaking up, Ken. Can you hear me? Um, one this thing so far. Two this thing. Something about listening. So. Okay, I'm so sorry, uh, Ken. I think you're breaking up. Uh, uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, you're breaking up pretty yeah, bad. I can say thing. Okay, Adriana. Thank you, Ken. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, I'm Adriana Agredano. I'm here based out of the Keller Williams office. I'm home today, so I'm not there. Um, but I do have the opportunity to teach a couple classes this round of Ignite. So I'm super excited. It'll actually be the first time that I'll be teaching. Those of you that are new or that are here for training, you you a lot of you already said it already, but you did right. You're at the right place. The best training in the industry. Mm -hmm. Happy to, happy to have How you. I miss you. You went muted. Adriana, did you mute yourself? Oh, no. Can you hear me? Oh, hold on, hold on. Sure. There we go. Okay, say it again. Okay. Well, I don't know where I left off, but I, <laughs> if, if you're looking for the best training in the industry, you're here. Welcome to Keller Williams. If you're with us already, we haven't had a chance to meet. I look forward to meeting you in person. Um, my schedule is a little a little crazy because I'm a, I'm a mom of a very busy teenager first, um, realtor second. Uh, I also want to be Brandy Jones when I grow up. So I'm all about taking it all in. And too, and she has incredible energy and knowledge. Um, real quick, a little bit about me. Um, I've been licensed for 25 years. Jeez, that's a long time. Yeah, I got my license really young, right out of high school. Um, I'm a second generation realtor. That's definitely something I'm super proud of. Um, I'm a, a born into real estate, so that's a, a definite blessing. If you ever see my dad in the office as well, he is a uh, wonderful basket of knowledge and is always happy to share his industry experience and his his uh, adventures over the last 45-ish years in the business in Southeast LA specifically. Um, Full time, I probably have done about 15, I would say maybe 12 to 15 years full time as a realtor um, with a uh, mixture of resale, which obviously I'm, I'm in now, and uh, new home construction. So that was an interesting uh, part of my life too. So sorry, again, there we go. Is it every time we touch this? <laughs> All right, Adriana, you're back. I'm back? You're back. Okay. Okay. There we go. I think okay. I got the combination I need now. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where I left off. What was the last thing I said? Your dad working. So yeah, your dad. Oh. Yeah. So if you see him in the office, feel free to say hi, pick his brain, ask him questions. Um, again, he has about 45 years of experience in Southeast LA. So and he's a wonderful resource of knowledge. I'm lucky to learn from him on a daily basis. Um, and besides that, my career span, spans about roughly, I'd say 12 to 15 years full time. Um, Full time, you know, full time at different times in my life because again, I, I have kids and at times took some time away from work. Um, yeah. and that's been a combination of uh resale real estate and I did new home, new home construction uh sales for roughly six years at one point, so that was kind of neat. So that's all. Welcome, everybody. I'll thank you, thank you, thank you, you guys. And Coffee with a Capper is on Friday and it's featuring Adriana. So as she mentioned, she has been a realtor since she, a real estate agent since she was right out of out of high school. So she's always known this is a, a part of what she wanted to do. Um, I think that is just amazing. Um, and her dad has been her mentor um, and he is just a wealth of knowledge. He actually has kept some of those old MLS books that you hear about. They're in his office. <laughs> he showed me one uh, like months ago. I was just blown away. Uh, we are so spoiled. That's what it is. <laughs> so um, thank you so much, Adriana. All right, Carolyn Garcia. No? Okay. Oh, go ahead, Carolyn. Oh. Oh. Hi. Oh. Hi. Okay, sorry, I didn't know I was going to talk. How long have you been in real estate? 
I've been in mortgage lending since 2002, going entering 2003. I started off with AmeriQuest on the retail side and the transition to Argent Mortgage. Um, I did all the positions from what they call account managing, um, mortgage underwriting, loan docs, funding, um, et cetera. Then I went to account executive sales within the Argent community. And then after the mortgage recession in 2000 and I think seven, I believe, is when my mentor group said that they might be opening, that they actually might be purchasing a bunch of loans on the servicing side, then it might be best I get my real estate license. <clears throat> I did. I got my real estate license and then Carrington, Carrington um, Servicing was opened and they also opened Carrington Real Estate. Okay. And I've been with the organization up until recently when I transitioned um, over to Keller Williams, first and primarily because I wasn't getting my incoming calls from the Carrington umbrella. Right. Um, and I wasn't getting my leads that I was gen self-generating. Gotcha. And, and what do you hope to take from Ignite? Um, you know what? I love to actually just sit with other real estate agents or just other people in the business and mortgage either the wholesale or the real estate department, because no matter what we skills that we know, we could always pick up other skills and pointers by our teammates, especially teammates that have been in the business for such a long time. So, you know, what they may do may be something that we could help us and what we do could be something that could help them. So I love just actually sitting in, in, in you know, in the bullpen okay. and being able to express ideas with other people and they could, you know, we can tell each other the good, the bad and what's working and what's not. Right. Gotcha. So, I love it. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to go really quick now because we've got to, we've got to get into the lesson and I don't want to keep you guys past eight tonight. Um, so I have a couple here that let you go ahead, tell us how long you've been in the business and what you, what you want to get from Ignite and project. It will. <laughs> um, I just have my license. I'm going to and then what do you want to get from the business? I mean, from, <laughs> from Ignite. Ignite. I see a lot of people that are doing good. Mm -hmm. Good. Crushing it. Yes. Absolutely. Love it. You will. Yes, you will. Absolutely. Okay, lovely. Angie, you're here. You got to introduce yourself. Hey, my name is Angie. Um, and I've been in the business for since 2005, almost 20 years. Um, I've been, I retired before pandemic, like I've been out of work for like three years. I just come back in January and I'm very excited because I was, I wasn't prepared to retire. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I just come back in January and, and I'm been doing so good. She's crushing it, you guys. She's crushing it. I love it. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Then Lady Avalon, your name. I just got licensed, and I'm here just to basically learn all the tools that I need to be uh, successful in real estate. Specifically, like, I want to learn how to sell the floor, I want to learn, like, pretty much just everything. Okay. So I'm here, I heard it's a really good um, program. I've had a lot of good feedback from, like, people that have been through the program. Good. So, yeah, I'm really excited, and I'm happy to get to learn all the stuff for the women. Wonderful. Welcome, Stephanie. Love to have you. So stop looking away. You know you're next. <laughs> you're looking away. You know you're next. Um, my name is Alma, and um, I've had my license going on uh, three years. Um, I was at another brokerage and another um, Keller Williams office, and I just felt like I never got the support that I needed, and I never um, took off. Actually, I never took off um, because I didn't feel um, uh, supported at all in any way. So I seem to have found the place that understands me and the people that understand me and how I learn and um, that have actually, like, um, I feel supported. Good. So, so much different. So different in every sense. Um, so I'm 
what I want to take from Ignite is um, like she said, it's like I, I want to take off. I want to learn. I want to learn what the basic steps and the fill out the forms and what happens. Well, I just learned last Saturday my first open house. So good. We got that um, good. in the store. And then just from there, what, what follows, what happens. Wonderful. Thank you. Marlena, introduce. Um, my husband and I, Louise, work together. My name is Marlena Macias. And what I'd like to do is fulfill our mission statement, you know, from top to bottom. Okay. Um, there's so much in there that contribute to our well being and success. So, you know, from win win situation to our perspective on technology and everything else. Okay. So, we're here to learn and be more dedicated to this process. Wonderful. Luis, you want to add oh, anything? I'm Maurice Macias. I've been in real estate a hundred years. <laughs> My mentor. <laughs> I've had three other mentors in heaven. So, I will take my head knowledge. There was uh, a to one broker. Uh, you yeah, have to take a function back and forth. It's the first thing that's wrong. Yep. Yeah. So, what do you want to get from uh, uh, Ignite? The more important is uh, be honest. You know? Yep. That's one of my first Everything. Yeah. It's what people get in trouble. You know, it's your place. It's your place. It's your place. So, you know, you talk to us to make it happen. All righty. So okay, let's let's get a couple more on um, Zoom. I'm sorry, guys. It takes a little while to get to know each other. India, hop off. Introduce yourself. Hey. So I'm India, and um, I've been in the industry now for going on eight months. And what I plan on getting from Ignite is just how to make this, um, of course, my full time legitimate business, and of course, just you know, maximize and become a top producer. I love it. Thank you so much, India. Sarah. Hi. <laughs> hey, oh, you got the baby. Yeah. Hi, everyone. This is Sarah, and here's my little one. And I'm really new in this field. And last week, I met with Brandy, which is, was a really fantastic experience and conversation. So... Jamika and Brandy brought me to this uh, Zoom meet and I felt really excited about it to see what the real training was is going to be like. And I hope to, I mean, start my career in this field because this month I start to uh, have the energy and power to work. So yeah, hopefully I can start really good and in the future to be somewhat producer in the future. So yeah. To from this uh Zoom meet, I hope to get um to see what the training was really like and want to learn something from this Zoom. Yeah, so thank Absolutely. you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Sarah, especially with the little one. I, I love you. your dedication. Okay. Um, let's see, Shatana, do you want to come off mute? I know you're driving. Hi, I'm driving there. I'm just, I don't get off work till five. I have had my license since January of last year. And um, I would like to learn just how to have consistent business and um, how to be engaging, what works best um, with getting leads, things like that. I love it. Thank you so much, Shatana. And definitely we're going to hit on all of the topics that you guys have talked about. Eileen? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, honey. Uh, okay, hi, everyone. This is Eileen. I've been a real estate agent for six years. Actually, April's first was my six-year anniversary with Keta Williams. <laughs> Woohoo! And um, I look forward to basically get a refresher on the basic fundamentals of the business. And uh, yeah, and, con and also come out of play with you guys and uh, get to meet some of you that I don't get to meet during the uh, during the day because I'm a part-time agent. So I'll see you soon. I'm driving over there right now. <laughs> Love it. I can't wait for you to get here. Shalom. I oh, got a baby. If you can come Hi, everyone. Off. Can Hi. you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Shalom. I've been in the business, I want to say, a year and 
maybe three months now and um ignite is the place to be i was at the first uh ignite and i learned a lot so i'm here for a refresher because sometimes trust me you know you'll be forgetting some of those things that you need to be doing so i'm here for a refresher and hopefully you know get back into you know closing deals yes because you and your first year closed three or three four three yeah three three yep yeah. and from cold leads you guys not even from warm leads this was cold leads so awesome job um shalom and she's got a little baby on the way um <laughs> love it all right anna did we get anna i don't think we got anna Hi, everyone. This is Anna Solares. I am also driving to the office to join you guys shortly. Um, I've been licensed for one year and working at Keller Williams for 10 months. Uh, I want to learn so much through this training. I want to learn from the best and I want to become really knowledgeable all around. Maybe one day I can become a coach as well. I love it, Anna. Let's go. Okay. Did I miss anybody? Diana? Did I, did I oh yeah you? oh yeah hi my name's diana i've been licensed for about 30 days i think um i'm really excited to be here and i think what my what i want to take away from today's class would be um, more lead generation both on like the buyer side and the selling side um strategies for lead generating yeah <laughs> okay wonderful did i miss anybody who wants to chime in all right so we have a nice size class, you guys, which means that we should have a lot of participation because this is not a show. I'm not here just to like, <laughs> no, I'm not here to tap dance. You guys are going to participate with me. We're going to have a good time um, and we're going to learn. And everything that you guys have talked about, I believe you will, you will learn as you go along. Now, the one thing that I did here, fill out forms, fill out forms. I heard that over and over again. So I just want to put it out there. This class is about building your business. Forms is a technical skill, right? Forms is a skill that it's like, okay, this is the line item. This is what you put there. This is this. This is what you put there, right? Line 9A, B means, and this is what you, you put there, right? Ed teaches that. <laughs> I just want to be clear. Tomorrow, Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday at 10 a.m., that's what he does every single week. And it's just rinse and repeat. He does the exact same cadence all over again once he makes it through the RPA, the listing agreement, the BRBC, all of those forms and then the disclosures. Then he just does it all over again. So that's where you're going to learn the technical skill of filling out the form. What you will learn here is how to put together an offer that's going to get accepted. We're going to assume you know how to fill out the form. But what you won't know is what to do in order to get the offer accepted as a new agent. So things like shortening your contingency periods, right? Things like making sure, and I know it says duh, but things like making sure that you actually call the listing agent instead of texting the listing agent, right? Things like having a cover page on your offer so that it's easy for them. I had an agent call me the other day and say, Brandy, your offer wasn't the highest, but man, it was the cleanest. I'm gonna give you a counter just because. I was like, thank you. I didn't want it because it was too high, but I felt good about the fact that I was in the competition because of my professionalism, right? And that's what we're gonna teach you guys is how to have that same professionalism so that you show up and as, and ex as, as exceptional, okay? You set yourselves apart from everybody else because everybody else texts, they don't even call. They do. Everybody else does things like no cover sheet. They send all like 10 attachments, right? Now, if you have to do that, you have to do that. But isn't it better to get one attachment? It's the little things, you guys, that listing um, agents appreciate and a buyer's agent. And it lets them know right up front how easy it's going to be to work with you. Because that's what it's all about. They want ease of, of working with you. And they're, they want to know that they're dealing with a professional. And you can be new and still be a professional who knows what they're doing. Don't let anybody tell you differently. That's what we're here for. We're here to have your back, right? Between Diana and I, we've got 36 years of experience. 
So you have no, and with Ed, a hundred years, right? <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. All right, let's get going. Let's get going. So we are doing this a little bit different because we want to give you as much support as we can. So you have Ignite Tuesday, Thursday from six to eight, right? That's our schedule. Tuesday, Thursday, six to eight. In addition to that, Wednesday, we have office hours. So if there's questions or if there's content that you want to go back over, that's the time to do it. We're going to be here in the office and via Zoom, and you can come into the office hours from 12, uh, from 12 to 1. And then guess what? Right after, we have tech training. The tech training is going to cover the, tech, the technical piece of, of, uh, of Ignite because there's always a technical piece. Right, we're gonna talk about tonight, we're gonna to talk about starting to use command and starting to put your contacts into command. Well, if you've never used command or if you don't know how, that's what's gonna be taught tomorrow, okay? Now, tomorrow's a little bit different because we do have our watch party. How many of you guys have been in on Value Square? I know Kim has and, and Oscar. Okay, you guys, Value Square is amazing. You guys, give Johnson a big hand for helping out tonight. <laughs> No, I'm just um so um value square is where Gary Keller, Big Papa's on, and um Jason Abrams are teaching us how to articulate our value. Because now more than ever, we need to be able to say and 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 clearly communicate why we should be paid. What is our value to a buyer? What is our value to a seller? Mr. Seller, why is it valuable that you should pay buyer compensation? Right? We got to be able to, we got to be able to back that up. And now more than ever, that's what we need to be taught. And that's what they're teaching. And I will tell you, I watched it and I was in and out of it because of, you know, other obligations. Um, however, I'm going to be seated, seated again because it was phenomenal. It had some really good nuggets, things that even a veteran needs to, re, like someone said, refresh, right? And then add to my repertoire because that can get stale, okay? Well, what's that again? It's called Value Square. And we'll throw up the, um because it because we you love you to be here great. because isn't this great? Isn't the synergy great among us? Yes, yeah. being here together, it's, it's different. I'm going to be like my kids, it's different when we're together <laughs> versus if you're on Zoom. But it, it is available on Zoom if you cannot be here. So we'll put that in the hub for those of you who need the um, the code. Yeah, the link. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning, conversations in real play. Again, if you guys want to play all out and you really want to make a difference in your business, attend these things. You're going to be learning scripts in here. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you get to practice them. Why not show up and practice them? It's at 9 a.m. I don't know about you guys, but what job do you know? A nine to, a nine to five that you don't start at nine o'clock, <laughs> right? Being a part, being a realtor is a double-edged sword <laughs> because you get to be your own boss and get to be your own boss, right? So you got to ask yourself, would you want you as an employee? And if the answer is no, start acting like, the employee that you know that you need to be, right? One of the things people always tell me is they love it because there is no ceiling in real estate. And I'm like, yes, yeah, and there is no floor. So you can make negative dollars in real estate because what do you spend every month? Your office fees, right? And if you don't make a deal, that's negative. So you've got to be about doing what it's going to take. And we're setting this up so that we're supporting you so that you get what you need so that at the end of this, you guys are all closing deals. Success is simple, not easy, because it's going to take you being uncomfortable. So I'm not going to snow blow you. It's going to take you being uncomfortable. But I'm counting on you to be uncomfortable and do it anyway. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Absolutely, Juan. That that should be your mantra. I'm gonna be uncomfortable. I'm gonna be comfortable being uncomfortable from here on out. Because even when you start doing a few deals to get to that next level, guess what? You have to be uncomfortable again. Okay. 
So this is our schedule. Any questions about our schedule? Yes. Um, for tech training, yes. is that also on Zoom or? Yes. Um, okay. It is also on Zoom, although um, Martha um, is the one that does it. And I will tell you, especially for you, it's probably better face-to-face. -face. Yes. Yes. Because you take that hands on. Um, mm -hmm. I have to be home uh, no later than 1 30 because I babysit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I can't take it in person, oh, okay. which I would love to take. Don't worry. Yeah. That's just what I was just listen in. Okay. And then you can build your questions list. Okay. Right. And then you can have someone on one time with Martha or with Diana or with Eileen, who's on her way here. They're all tech gurus who can help you. Okay. And Oscar says you will have questions, which you will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about being the real estate expert. We're going to talk about lead generation, lead follow-up, and the transactions. That's what Ignite is. That's the four pillars of Ignite. Real, be, being a real estate expert, you guys can dive into your uh, manual. Oh, and let me tell you a little bit. Again, I've been a bowl. I've been in bowls. I don't know. Any of you guys know bowls? All right. Um, it is a seven-week intensive sales training class. I'm a 17-time bowl graduate. Okay. I had to contact 20 people a day, 100 people a week in order to earn that. Um, it, it, it's pretty intense, okay? Um, and I loved it. And uh, 17 times because I'm slow because it takes me a while to get stuff, right? So <laughs> I'm like, hey, I, I need it. But no, every time I took it, I learned something new, right? If you go to church, every time you hear a word, it could be the same scripture. And it's like, wow, that's different. I didn't hear that before, right? So um but I said that to say that um, one of the things that you do is when you walk in the door, you have to check in and you have to have your homework in order for get your in order for you to get your packet to the next week. Well, guess what? We're going to do that here. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're going to have some serious accountability. OK, so when you get here, don't you see through that door. We're going to catch you. I'm going to catch you. All right. I've got all my instructors. They know what the deal is. And I got Dono staying late just so that Jonathan staying late just so that he can get you. So um, you will have to have your homework and get it checked off and you'll get your packet. OK, for the following week. All right. And OK, so then we're going to talk about tonight being a real estate expert. Lead generation comes with the following. And then we're going to go into lead follow up. You guys, we have got to me a goat teaching lead generation follow-up um, and how to keep your um, leads. This woman has gotten leads just in the past three weeks from people that she's known for three, four years. Martha <laughs> dropped six listings on her the other day, you guys. Six. Count six. All right. And I'm not talking, I'm talking they're under con they're they're there. She's got listing agreements and everything. She's walking in my office like, look who's posing escrow. Look who's got a phone. I'm like, oh my God, I love it. So that's the kind of thing that we want to create in our databases is, and she's not doing anything, you guys. She's not, she's like, doesn't even know these people when they call her. But they're like, Martha, you've been keeping in touch with me for years. And she's like, oh, really? right. So that's what we want to do. Right, have our database work for us so that we are not working harder, we're working smart. Right. And that's what command can do. So lead follow-up and then the transaction. Taking you guys through the transaction, how to go from um, start to finish so that you can close the deal and then post-close because you don't want to leave them, right? You want to be their realtor for life. I I've gotten to the point in my career where now I'm helping my clients' children. And I cannot tell you guys what an honor it is for moms and dads to refer their children to me. Do you know how much trust they have to have in me to refer their children? That's amazing to me. And I'm just, I'm always, I'm just so honored. Um, and I just love it. And even when they refer their friends to me and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so honored. But I wouldn't do that if I didn't a, keep in touch, but also if I wasn't good at what I do, right? But that keeping in touch is important. That's that post close. Okay. And I tell them all the time, you're never getting rid of me, ever. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Okay. All right. So spark your careers tonight and embrace your job. We fit it too um, in. And I'm going to go quickly with KW Culture because, again, although this is a KW class, um, I don't want to make it all about KW. This is about your careers. Okay. This is about you guys getting into production. So anyone can do it, not everyone will. 
will you? What does that mean? Anybody got a what does that mean? And my Zoomers, please feel free to come off mute. What does that mean to you? What does this quote mean? <laughs> Anyone can do it. Not everyone will. Mm. Just a chat. Oh, I'm, I'm jumping in that one. <laughs> Caroline is feeling that. Whatever that sandwich is right <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, I said, I'll oh, start eating my sandwich. I don't know if you guys get to me, but I apologize. I would say, you know what? Everyone's capable of doing it. Not everyone will. There is some people who may prevent. It. For an example, my phone hackers. They're hacking my phone. They're trying to get my real estate leads. Or for whatever reason, they're preventing my growth. So I'm willing and able to do that. And I can master this whole the whole business in the whole profession. But you know what? If I have people preventing me from picking up that phone line and not letting my phone ring for the last 15 years when I had my real estate license, mm -hmm. because I thought about the companies instead of my best, you know, what was best for me, they thought it was best for everybody. And we we all want to share, but we want to have the first order of refusal when we self-source those leads, yeah. right? You oh, self-source wow. those leads, do you want to be able to make some of the money? But if you're not making no money and everyone's taking your fruit, what next? Yeah. The tree's going to die. Yeah. And and thank you for that, Carolyn. Yeah. So, so anyone can do it. Not everyone will. I like what she said in the beginning about the fact that, you know, everybody can do this business, you guys. But it takes work to do it. It takes work. So not everybody's willing to work. Right? Everybody sees you closing X deals and they think, oh, my God, that's easy. You guys tell me this. Why is everybody in a movie a realtor? <laughs> Do you guys notice that? Like in these movies, when they show up in their nice cars and everything, they're they're realtors. I'm like, they are making us look like trash <laughs> because they just like drinking coffee, making dollars, and they're all realtors. It cracks me up. My husband is always like, "There's another one. <laughs> There's another one." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, I know. I see it. I see it." All right. So the six personal perspectives. If you want to know and boil it all down. Gary Keller, and this is in your book, you guys can follow along. Gary Keller did research and he, he researched the top agents, millionaire real estate agents, and boiled down their six skills. What were they doing that was different from everybody else? And these are the six things that made them different. Number one, they committed to self-mastery. They committed to the 80-20 principle, move from E to P, and I'll, I'll explain all this, um, they made learning based foundation. They made being learning based the foundation of their action plan. They removed limiting beliefs, which is a huge one. Um, and then lastly, being accountable. Okay. Six, six qualities of our top agents, right? In the industry, because Gary Keller did, just didn't go after KW agents, he researched all agents who were achieving at a very high level. And this is the six things that were made them different are these six items, okay? So commit to self-mastery, know your goals. Be clear, clarity is power, you guys. Clarity is power. My coach just told me that the other day. She said, I went from not doing what I was supposed to do the week before and we talked about it. I got clarity on what I was, what my goals were. And the next day, all boxes were checked or the next week, all boxes were checked. She was like, you need clarity in everything you do. Have clarity and you'll knock it out the park. Right? So clarity is power. Know your goals. Know your strengths and weaknesses. When I was growing up, everybody tried to accentuate your weaknesses. They always said, let's work on your weaknesses. I'm going to tell you guys, work on your strengths. Work from your strengths. Forget your weaknesses. They're weak. It, hey, hey, we ain't getting no younger. So do what you're good at. If you're good in front of people, do more of that. If you're good on the phones, do more of that. Whatever you're good at, just do more of it. Don't worry about, oh, I'm not good on the phones. Then get off the phone. Do what you're good at. You don't have to start trying to learn a new skill You've got plenty right now. I promise you, you've got everything you need to be successful in this business. We all do. I have people who don't even like people successful in this business. They don't even like people. They're like, mm -hmm, nah, I'm good. Guess what? They get along with other numbers people who don't like people either. <laughs> they found their tribe. 
and and those people actually make a lot of money <laughs> and 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 they're they're successful i am not playing you guys i've seen it i've seen it time and time again i have had i've listened to people who don't speak a bit of english hardly it's very hard to understand and be highly successful and you know what he told me he said because i'll outwork you i'll talk to anybody and you won't mm -hmm. i'll talk to anybody I don't care what they look like. I don't care. I'll talk to anybody. That's what he told me. He told us, the audience, and at the CAR conference. <laughs> uh, so, so again, know your strengths and weaknesses. Know how to work with both your strengths and your weaknesses, right? And seek to master the necessary knowledge and skills and habits to reach your goals. All right, commit to the 80-20. What does that say up there? Oscar, tell me what that says up there. What's the 80-20? 20% of your actions leads to 80% of your results. And what does that mean? That means just one-fifth of what you do actually generates. The business, right? There's a very small amount of what you do that's actually going to make 80% of the results. There's a very small amount of what you do. Now, all of you guys are very intelligent folks, so you tell me what's a part of that 20%. I'm scooting in the future, but tell me. What's one action that you know is a part of that 20%? Thank you. Ding, 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 ding. Oscar, I got a prize for you. All right, lead generation. If you did nothing else in this business, you guys, you will be highly successful if you only lead generate it and left everything else to everybody else. You can get a showing assistant. You can get an assistant to push paperwork for you. If all you did was set up appointments and go on appointments, highly successful in this business. Okay, people have done it. They've set up their whole model like that because they were good at being on the phones and setting up appointments. So they, they work their strength and left everything else to everybody else. Okay, move from E to P. So move from your entrepreneurial approach to a purposeful approach. You wouldn't be here if you weren't entrepreneurial, right? If you didn't have that self-drive. I don't know about you guys, but I was an entrepreneur from birth. I have done everything known to man. I have done Mary Kay. I have done prepay legal. I have done Amway. I have done, what else have I done? I've done everything. Herbalife. Herbalife. I did Herbalife. <laughs> Didn't like it, but I did it. Because I was trying to find what I did. Insurance? Avon. I didn't do Avon. <laughs> I didn't do Avon, no. Um, I, was, I was trying to find, you know, what I could sell that I could back up. Right? And nothing felt good. Nothing felt good. I didn't feel authentic. Um, until real estate. Until real estate. And when I found that, when I found my home here, I was so comfortable letting go of my six-figure job. My mother and dad were like, you're crazy. And husband, too. Were like, what in the world? What are we doing? But I knew I had found home. I knew I had found what I could do. And I could do it well. And I knew I could make up for that six-figure income and more. So you got to have that deep belief in yourself mm -hmm. that you can do this. Right, you can do this despite anything. We've had engineers and lawyers and doctors walk away from their professions and get into real estate, you guys, because it just wasn't their fit. And this is home. But there's a ceiling for all of us where that entrepreneurial mm -hmm. approach, you're going to hit that ceiling, right? And what you have to do, you've got to get perfect. You've got to get new skills, new knowledge, so that you can take yourself to that next level. And that's what all of you are doing here. That's what we're doing here today. We're getting new skills. We're learning a new approach or expanding our approach, right? So then we can take ourselves to that next level. And at every level, there is a ceiling and you keep busting through. You keep busting through, right? The skills that you have right now got you to where you are. You need new skills to get you to that next level. Okay, all right. New skills and also new decisions, let's be clear. New choices, right? New choices. All right. Make being learning-based the foundation of your plan. 
All right, what does that mean to you? Let's see, what does make learning based be the foundation of your plan? Absolutely, learn as much as you can so that you, you know what? It, 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 um, it actually peeves me when I talk to these seasoned agents and they talk down to you, all right? They're like, oh, well, um, you know, yeah, I, I got your offer. Brandy, I've been in this business for 30 years. I mean, I've seen it all. Oh, no, I got to me. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're closed off. They're not open to possibilities, <laughs> new ways of thinking of things. Don't be that person. Always be open to learning. You can always learn something, even if it's learning the energy of another person. I don't know about you, but the reason why I love recruiting new agents and I love talking with new agents is because they give me energy. They remind me why I love this business because they get in there all wide-eyed and new and they're like, oh, I'm going to be good, Brandy. And I'm like, Bonnie, oh my God, I get all excited. I'm like, okay, let's do this, right? It's like I'm first day on the job. So it, you can always learn. So make being learning based the foundation, right, of your action plan. It should be in your growth plan, being learning based. What classes are you going to take? That's why you're here today, because you're learning based. I am neither especially clever nor especially gifted. I am only very curious. Albert Einstein. I love that because he was one of the smartest man in the world, basically. <laughs> but he's like, I'm not clever. I'm not gifted. I'm just really curious. I keep asking questions. All right. That I keep asking the next question and the next question. Some of the reasons why when we're on the phones and we're making cold calls and we don't get the appointment is because A, we didn't ask. And B, we just didn't have a long enough conversation to uncover the motivation. Because mm -hmm. we're too busy trying to get off the phone. Right? We're too busy trying to get off the phone. So <laughs> we have got to come from curiosity. Okay? <laughs> Coming from curiosity is, is the key. Remove your limiting beliefs. Let's see, who hasn't talked? Alma, remove your limiting beliefs. What does that mean? Um, old patterns of thought that are working against you mm -hmm. or not working for you any longer. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. What's a limiting belief? Give me one. Anybody got something to care to share? My yeah. Zoomers, please come off mute. You can. For example, somebody says, oh, I can do this because I am the like this. Or I can do this because I feel shy. Oh, maybe this is not for me. Okay. So I'm shy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe this is not all the things don't make you grow. <laughs> exactly. Affecting the growth. Your growth. Affecting your, all those negative things that affect yeah. your growth. Yeah. Absolutely. Oscar, were you about to say one? No, I'm just going to say, you're the doctor. I don't have enough time for training. Ah, I yeah. can't be successful in the Excuses. Yeah. I can't devote three hours a day to leave. But... Yes, Shatana. I think for me, I, I think I'm not skilled enough. Or I don't mm -hmm. have the knowledge to come to here. So, right. That's a big <laughs> one. Thank you for saying that. That's a big one for most new so, agents. Um, mine was fear. Fear of, of telling people, oh, I'm a I'm a real estate agent. Um, how can I help you? It's like, what do I say? What if I don't have one back to the right mind. thing to mm -hmm. say? You know, what if I look stupid or dumb? Or... Yeah. Because we want to look good and be right. Everybody wants to look good and be right. Remember that. When you're talking with your clients and you're correcting them or they're telling you something that isn't right, remember they want to look good and be right. So be careful how you correct them that you don't make them wrong in what they're saying, okay? That's just a tidbit. But getting back to limiting beliefs, I've heard a lot, single mothers say, I've got kids, I can't be successful because all my time is with the kids. Or mothers with, with spouses, a lot of mine. <laughs> my husband now. Um, one of mine, um, full disclosure, was that um, I would get divorced if I was successful. <laughs> Because every person that I say, every woman 
that I saw in this business at the time was that was highly successful was divorced. And of course, <clears throat> if I think that, what am I going to see? More divorce. More divorce. Right? More divorce successful women. <laughs> Until I met one who was not divorced, who had a husband that she worked alongside of, which is super challenging, and had two kids. And it started to change my belief. I had to see the evidence of it, but I was already seeing the evidence of the other. But you guys, that was huge in, in me. It was huge. And it took bold to uncover it, actually. Um, and a lot of time, and me and my husband had to really have some serious conversations because I was really hung up on that. And of course, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person that my mother, um, so my dad passed, was married um, for 40 years, right? And my mother is a G. Like, I just seen some stuff. And I was like, well, if I can't, I, she didn't leave. I certainly can't leave, right? Like, he's a good man. So I had a serious limiting belief. So I'm telling you guys this because you've got to uncover whatever yours are. Because they will hold you back Brandy. from being super successful. Yes. One that I feel like I hear a lot from new agents is my friends or family won't buy from me. Ooh, I feel like I see, hear that all the time on the Facebook groups and, you know, all of that. Like, oh, what do I do now? They will yeah. just keep talking about it. Absolutely. They will. Right. I'm sorry, Caroline, go ahead. I think they just have to see your knowledge and your product knowledge and truly know the person you are to accept. It's basically OK. For an example. Um, yeah, for an example, my Facebook right now, my personal account, it looks really, really amateur. It's a lot of music. It's like a joint account right now with like me and my daughter. It's a lot of music videos, a lot of stress-free, a lot of classical music. But what they don't realize is that that was a face car, the cover face of the person my lead was. So for 20 years, I was pumping all these leads, not knowing that people were actually seeing my stuff. Okay. Now I'm just going public yeah. with the videos of everyone who was seeing my stuff. And that's the reason why my phone lines were hacked, I believe. And to this day, I have not made any real money in real estate because someone knows the truth about me and someone's hacking my phone lines. However, your friends and family, don't be scared to tell them the truth. Your friends and family will hire you as long as they trust you and they know that your product knowledge is there because you're, they're trusting. Like for me, my family in real estate, if I cannot give them five star, 10 times star service, I will refer them over to somebody they can. Because they're trusting me with their estate. That yeah. is their estate. So I'm not going to ever ruin somebody's portfolio because I need a commission. Right. So they're going to hire you so long as they trust your product knowledge and, and trust us, right? Yes, absolutely. And I love that. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. If, they, if they believe that you can do the job and you're credible, more than likely they will do business with you. But do you do you always have a person who won't? Yeah. I mean, what can I, I say this? <laughs> Who's to say that's who you really want to? Who's to say that's who you really want to do business with? With just your family, you want to do people who want to work with you. Absolutely. You want to work with people that want to work with you and who will give you what you deserve. So who says that family will be the one that will do that for you? That's right. Right. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And here's the saying: Some will, some won't. Some won't. So what? Who cares? Yeah. And remember, we just want Push the referral it. too. That's how I feel too. Sometimes that the closer the family is, the less you want to work with them. And that's okay. Yeah. Um, one thing my dad told me a long time ago was don't expect to get rich off of your friends or family. But <laughs> if you keep talking about it and tell and letting people know you're in the industry and all that, it's funny. I have had friends and close friends and family not use me because it maybe was too close of a relationship, but they've referred me, Yes, which is the craziest thing. So just keep, just talk about it. Fake yeah. it till you make it, as my husband says. <laughs> that's all right. Fake it till you make it. And what I normally tell folks is another thing that causes family not to want to work with you is confidentiality. If you got a family like mine who talk a lot about everybody's business, like my business in the street before my business is even, before I even leave this building. If I told my mama it is in Louisiana right now, I promise you, I have to be very clear. Like, do not share that with Auntie Johnny. Do not share that with Uncle with, with Uncle JB. She got 13 brothers and sisters, you guys. And they all got children and they all got children. Our family is huge. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So, business is in the street. What I tell my family when I work with them is you will never hear 
anything about this transaction that you didn't tell them. Not for me. And my mother is like, girlfriend, what did Betty do? I'm like, what Betty did? <laughs> that's what she did. <laughs> I'm not telling you. I'm like, you already know what I'm going to tell you. No, absolutely not. Because I know she can't hold water. So <laughs> when you are, when you set up that with your family, that they know that you're going to be a vault, sometimes that will bring them to work with you, actually. And sometimes not. Okay. So be accountable. Hey, 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 number hey, six. Yes. Yeah. And Randy, one thing that we're going to learn in today, in, in throughout these Ignite sessions is the power of mindset, right? Um, it's basically how well you train your mindset to believe that you're capable of doing this business, right? And uh, one thing that I can share is that I just got a commission check from a transaction and I closed uh, representing the buyer from a former boss of mine who actually terminated terminate me on my last employment. Oh and she just purchased a home through me yesterday. And I got a commission check from her and I'm like, really? yesterday. So I'm so like, okay, I, everything is, is possible. That is, that's freaking awesome, Eileen. Oh my God. So it's the power of mindset, right? Okay, she terminated me. I had to go and get a new job, right? And right. then she called me. I want to buy a home in California. I want you to represent me. Okay, awesome. I, I want absolutely. your money. <laughs> she said, absolutely. Never burn bridges. I love that. That is wonderful. Last um, personal perspective, be accountable, okay? Be accountable. So life happens, reality shows up. So what does being accountable? Mm -hmm. Anybody want to say what is being accountable? We're going to keep moving. Shatana? Um, showing up when you say you're going to show up, call when you say you're going to Absolutely. Be a, be a person of your word. Also, you got to understand that accountability starts with you, right? It's not about you being accountable to another person. Accountability has to start with you, right? You have to be a person of your word. If you say, I'm going to do something, you've got to be the person to do it. Accountability is saying that my success or failure rises and sets on me. I'm not going to make excuses. It's the market. Well, if somebody else is achieving big things in the market, then it's not the market, right? It's, it's the interest rates. Mm, but is it? Because other people are doing really well with this 7%. So it's not the interest rates. You cannot make excuses for yourself, right? You have to be accountable and say, my success. And to me, that's what real estate is harder than just about any other industry. Because when you wake up in the morning, it's you and you, right? It's you and you. No other, the other, the, any other stuff, it's like, okay, I got a boss. I got, you know, I got, they gave me this to do. Nope, nope, nope. You're the boss, right? It's, it is definitely on you to succeed or fail. Okay. All right. Happiness is not an individual sport. Sean Aker, has anybody read the happiness bus? You guys should write that down. The happiness bus. It's a great book. Happiness is not an individual sport. We are made for community. That's why being here together has so much energy because we are made for community, which is great in our business because we get the, the ability, we get the privilege to impact the community, right? So this is a great business to be in. Any ahas? Give me a aha. What's the name of that book, The Happiness? The Happiness Bus. 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 Behind by Sean Aker. Sean Aker. The happiness bus or the happiness bus? Happiness bus. Getting on the happiness bus. Oh, yeah, right. Ride the bus. <laughs> ride the bus. Right. That's the little yellow school bus. <laughs> That's what it's called. Okay. Any aha? Give me an aha. Well, I'm talking about my Friday. Go to work. Yes, please, man. I went to an appointment, I will say, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and there was another two agents sitting waiting for me. Wow. Because she put the three of us at the same table. Oh. All guys and me. So I didn't know. She never told me. Wow. I wanted to be her. Right. So uh, I showed up, and it was two other guys, and they were sitting like, I'm like, oh, it's a long day. But we're here to see. So, she made the appointment for 10 30. Mm -hmm. So I told her, I'm not going to be a little bit later because of the traffic and all the way to come. Mm -hmm. So I show up and she interviewed 
a formal meeting. What's right now with questions, can we answer and all that? Wow. And I was never in a lot happened with me in 20 years. Right. And then she says, well, I'm going to let you guys, uh, whoever I choose, I'm going to call in the next hour. Okay. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to look because one was only like 40 years in the business and the other one is a top producer, so in, in the area of Fontana. Okay. So, I'm like, so I just set up my mind at the moment and say, if it's meant to be, to help her and me, it will be. Right. And then on the way, she took her to the phone. Ah, I love it. Even I have to be good for and prepare for that. Right. And I, I become <laughs> on top. Yes. And another one is that moment that I that I, I was in shot at the moment. I'm like, and just in my mind, like, is this meant to be meant to be? Right. Simple. Right. So two ahas to me, I heard that is mindset. Right? She was like, if it's meant to be, it's going to be for me. And she sat down and just gave it her all. Um, and then the other one that I heard, and, I, and as soon as I said that, I, I was about to lose it. Um, but I heard a second one. Thank you. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because I don't know about you, but if I walked into a room with two other agents there and we were all sitting there, and I would have had a problem. I might have been like tapping my feet or, you know, doing something fidgety. Um, but you got to be comfortable being uh, uh, uncomfortable, right? And I she handled that like a shot, boss. I will say, she's not going to be with me. And then on the way back, I'm like, that's so good. Yeah. I was even impressed with uh, one of the top producers. And you're like, I'll buy a house for you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> this, this presentation was amazing. Oh, wow. Okay. My... I wasn't prepared for that competition. So when did you ask her why she chose you? Yes. And what did she say? Because you don't you don't come and push, you don't come and, and demand. You just come and see what are your needs. I love it. So you just were a human being talking to her. And talking to her, probably not down to her, like some people like we tend to do, right? Like we're so high and this person and you don't know what we know, Mr. Seller. So good for you, Angie. That's awesome. She's a boss. All right. So let's talk. We're gonna we're gonna blow through this. You guys know our culture. We have a lot of things that KW offers, but one of the things that I think matters is environment matters, right? Our our culture matters. Um, we have Red Day, which is coming up May 9th. The market calendar is May 9th, Red Day. We're gonna be doing a service project. We are gonna be figuring out what that will be. Um we have KW Cares. That's our nonprofit organization made to help us as agents when we are in a um, um, a tragic situation. Typically, when you're in a tragic, like like the Mountain fires. I don't know if you guys know, but we lost seventeen of our agents lost their homes in those fires. One of our agents lost his life going back to his mother. Yeah, it was it was just just crazy, and she passed away too. Um, just, just horrible, right? KW Cares within like 24 hours had sent $30,000 to make sure that they had food, clothing, and a place to stay. And then kept sending supplies and money based on what the um, regional director there was telling them that for the needs. So giving to KW Cares is, it, it is, you guys, it's the best thing that you can do because <laughs> one day you might be a need of that, okay? Um, diversity, equity, inclusion, um, something that's near and dear to my heart. Gary Keller saw a need that basically we had, uh, we don't have enough, enough black and brown. We didn't have enough, we didn't have enough diversity. It's not just about black and brown, right? <laughs> Women, right? Um, there was no diversity or very little diversity at the top. And so they, Gary Keller and his executive team, decided that we needed to change that and start opening up opportunities. And now we have a whole task force built for that and a whole community built around that. I think it's important to be a part of an organization that recognizes that and does something about it. I'm proud of that, okay? All right, 
So let's go to, okay, we're going to go. You guys know our mission to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. We talked about all that, okay. Um, this quickly, I don't know if you guys know, but we are the top franchise for veterans in 2023. We're the top female-friendly company, top 500 franchises in 2022, world's best employers in 2023, um, America's best employer for women and new grads in 2023, and best employers for diversity in 2023. So again, just more that we can, as agents here, can be really proud of, right? We can be really proud of our, our awards and, and what we're about. It's not necessarily the award, it's what the award means, right? All right. I think it's something that we can promote and when we go out to our uh, abundance. Absolutely, Angie. Something that they, they will, they will pack their attention. Yes, absolutely. I, I agree. And I, yes, we could put that in our listing presentations, right? All right, so we've got, you guys know we've got training and coaching. We've got command, mm -hmm. which is our um, leading edge technology. And it's not only on your desktop, on your laptop, you have it on your phone. So make sure you guys download the command app. We need to work with it. We need to download the command app because you can do, it's your mobile app. You can do almost everything from it that you can do in your, um, in your desktop or your laptop, okay? So make sure that you guys are using that. And then you have your KW app that you can give to your friends, family, colleagues, everybody to look up properties wherever they are. And I love it because you get to see what they're looking at on the back end. I love the little sleuth factor, right? Like, hey, I saw you like that property. Why don't we go take a look at that property, right? All right. All right. So we talked about all of that. This is a good stuff. Let's talk about your vision and your future. Do you want to get you a binder and one of the red binders there? All right. So today, right now, it is one year from now. This was today, April 9th, 2025. And you have been in business. Your business is thriving, you guys. You're doing well in business. You've got clients. You've got mo momentum mm. on your side. Your family and friends are proud of you. They're cheering you on. They're like, let's go, let's go. You guys are doing, you're doing so well. Let's see, you're doing so well. I'm so proud of you. You've come out of your shell. Um, you're helping people live their dream of home ownership or helping them to downsize and start a new chapter of life, okay? So you're the top agent in the market center. I'm coming to you like, hey, I'd like you to think about joining the ALC next year, right? Because your numbers are amazing and you're in culture. So you're poised to hire your assistant or a part-time assistant or a VA because you got so much business, you need leverage, right? And we teach that to you. So you're on the path to tell me what the rest is. What's the rest? What's your story? What do you want to achieve? You've got this momentum going in your business. Okay, write it down. You've got this momentum going in your business. Mm -hmm. What do you want to achieve? 2025. You've got, you guys have got experience now. You got experience. So there's no excuses about, oh, I don't know. Nope, you learned it and you crushed it. So now what do you want? What's next for you? What's next for you? You're on the path to what? Greatness. Hey, what does that look like? I like it. You're on the path to greatness. What does greatness mean to you? It means building a foundation. Okay. And that's just the beginning of it. Um, you know, the fact that you want to be accountable and keep up with all your clients and, you know, develop your foundation. Your client so write that down for me, Marlena. Mm -hmm. Marlena gave some good food for thought. What is it that you want to achieve once you start to get that momentum? What kind of business do you want? How many deals mm -hmm. do you want to close? Huh? What's your family life like? <laughs> you, you're like a boss. So you can afford the Disneyland tickets. They cost $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
So what would that look like? Are you taking care of a parent? Box seats to the, me and Oscar, he doesn't know who I, me and Oscar, box seats to the Laker game. Me and him are going to be right there. Box seats to the Laker game. Absolutely. Or the Dodger game. Give it a score. I'll take it. I'll, I'll actually take the Dodgers before I take the Lakers. I'm sorry. I just, I love my boy. I love my boys in blue. Are you the other way around? I got you. I got you. I, hey, you take me. I'll go. I'm okay. <laughs> so what does that look like? My husband's a huge Cowboy fan. I've always said, like, one day I'm going to get him season tickets. So far? No. Texas Stadium, baby. Oh, okay. Yes. Just be like, let's go. It's the weekend. Let's go. I, I know many, <laughs> many fans of Cowboys. Cowboy fans? Yeah, they Cowboys doing all the way. Yeah, they, it's a love hate relationship, Louis. <laughs> it's a love hate relationship. The very loyal. Oh, it's true. Yeah, oh, we are. Yeah. I love the cast. Yeah, we are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ride or die, baby. All right. Now, let's talk about your big life. On the next page, you guys should have empty boxes around a circle in the middle. Okay? So I want you guys to take off the limiting beliefs of what you can't afford right now. I don't have no money. I can't be thinking about these things. All of that. Take it away. Get rid of it. You have an unlimited checkbook. I'm so old. I have checkbook. <laughs> you got an unlimited bank account. Okay? Many zeros. Many zeros. <laughs> Many zeros. I want you guys to write in those outer boxes something that you desire. It could be a service project. It could be building a, a church somewhere, building a school somewhere. It could be buying a car. It could be buying a house, your first house. It could be buying your first investment property. Whatever you desire, put it, start putting them in those outer boxes and do not, if you think it, put it down. Don't stop yourself. Don't be like, ah, ah, that's too much. It's not too much. Put it in the box. Everybody at home, get some boxes on a blank piece of paper. Build this little diagram for yourselves and do the exercise. It could be you want to donate, right? Yes. Number one, have good health. Have good health. So maybe that'll cost you money, right? So how much does good health cost? Uh, an arm and a leg. <laughs> a, a house on a leg? I said an arm and a leg. <laughs> an arm and a leg, right? <laughs> right. I agree. I believe you. But if you if you have an idea that you want to maybe have a personal trainer, right? You want to have a personal trainer for a year. Put it in there. Put it out in one of your boxes. Okay? Don't limit yourself. And this is hard. If this is hard for you, recognize that. If you have stopped dreaming, you need to recognize that. It's probably a limiting belief there somewhere that's stopping you from being able to fill those boxes quickly. Because I know there's stuff that we all want or we desire. We are not willing to let ourselves go there because we don't believe we can get it. <clears throat> Let yourself go there. Let yourself go there. And then what you're going to do, and, and we can table this because I want, this is part of your homework. It's got to be complete. All the boxes have got to be complete. It doesn't matter if it's small either. And then I want you to add up everything in that middle box. How much is it? Okay. Add up everything in that middle box. How much is it? All right. Money wise. Money wise. And if you if you have time, put a little line under and put your time too. Yeah. But it's it's about the the dollars. It's about the the, the money that it'll take. Yeah. Read that for me. 
to achieve success, new motivation, and inspiration for doing it. Your big one. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, what does that mean? Well, you have to have something motivating you to get it done. There's nothing going to get done just because you say it. Right. You have to feel it. Absolutely. I love that. And and actually, and I'm sorry, Marco. Marco. Marco is making such a good point, you guys. Your big why, you should feel. If you could say it and it doesn't stir anything in you, that's not really your big why. Right? If I told you guys my big why right now, I'd start crying. That's 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 how deep it is, right? It's about legacy. And when I say it, I feel it. I feel emotional because it freaking means something to me. It's why I said mm -hmm. I'll take the team leader position. Because of legacy. You'll take the what? Team leader. That's why I'm on team leader. Yeah. Because of legacy. It means something to me. All right. So it should stir you. And these numbers that you're putting in there, these these activities or or these things that you desire, probably has somewhere in there a part of your big why connected to it. Because I'm guessing that everybody didn't just put a car or you know a house. If you put units, it's probably the legal to make sure that your kids have something or to make sure that your family is taken care of. Right? Why is that important to you? You need to explore that. Why is that important to you? Because I want to leave my kids with money. Why? Why? My coach put me on the spot during bold one time. And he just kept asking me why. I was like, because I want them to be good people. Why? Why is that important to you? Because I, you know, because I was brought up a certain way and I want my kids to be a certain way. I want them to be able to thrive. Why is that important? Right? He just kept on. He says, Brandy, we got to keep unpeeling the the, the onions, onions, right? Until you get to the core of the item, right? Till you get to the core of the item, which is I want my kids to have opportunities that my parents were not afforded, even, even bigger than what I have available to me. I want them to have choices. I don't want money to ever be an issue. I don't ever want to have to say we can't afford, right? It's, it goes deeper and you guys got to feel it. So make sure in your book where you're writing out your big why, I want you guys to, that's another assignment. You got two. So you got the circle and then you got your big why. And I think it's right underneath the circle, right? Yeah. yeah. Those, this whole that whole page. page. Yeah. Homework. Whole page is homework. Okay. Write out your big why. And I'm sure most of us are going to need a little more paper. So add another sheet for yourself. But give it some thought. Really, decide you guys are going to play all out and give it some thought and put it down there. All right, so quickly, where do commission dollars go? Most of us can answer this, right? Where do commission dollars go? To the IRS, yes. Is that in there? Of course, that's in there. Yes, that's in there. All right, so the other agent, half, right? Typically, if you're a listing agent, half. Even if you're the buyer's agent, they took half, right? All right. Then your market center, your split, right? 70, 30, 80, 20, 85, 15, whatever it is, your market center gets their cut, okay? Then you have your business expenses. That gets another piece. What do you say? The board yeah. Board dues, absolutely. Car expenses, right? Um, office fees are a part of your business expenses. Gas food. <laughs> Gas, food, absolutely. And then taxes, like Martha said, or somebody, or Louie, you said it, IRS. Yeah. Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. Yes. So at the end of the day, that's your take home of the dollar, you guys. Why are we showing you this? <laughs> Because as new agents and even us experienced agents, we get starstruck. We see that closing and it's 15 grand. Woo! A lot of money. But what deal? And we think we're going to get that whole 15 grand. And we've already spent it, quite frankly. Let's be real. We've already spent it. 
right? We already got the vacation book. We already got the car. We already got all the things, right? So it's already spent. Just remember that money has to be divvied up, right? That money has to be divvied up. And you definitely need, one of the biggest issues with realtors is taxation. We get caught after the fact. <clears throat> and when this is our tax season, right? And we find out, oh my God, I didn't hold back any taxes. And then you owe the government. If you've made a lot of money, you could owe them $30,000. Yes, Shabbat. So is there an option in your uh, test roll on that ID to take the taxes out? That's a good question. Shabbat is saying, is there an option for us to take the taxes out automatically? Right. What do you think? Well, that would mean giving you two, oh, and send it to the IRS? Right. I don't know. I'll have to ask. But, That's a great question. Based on my experience, uh, each individual person will have a different tax bracket. They will. But you so, can tell in, in what Shatana is saying, you can tell the uh, escrow person, take out this. Yeah. And then that could be sent. Yeah. yeah so. Or send it. She's saying, can we send it? I don't think we can, mm -hmm. but that is a good. So you would just have like a savings account. You would. Yeah. You would have your tax account. Mm -hmm. And that money, you don't even look at it. You just put it, push it into the, the tax account. That's actually what the, the recommendation is to do. And it's uh, 20 now that's Louis what he yeah, just said. It depends on your tax bracket. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 If you want to make 100000 and that is like when I ask somebody and I ask my agents what they want to make, everybody wants to make $100,000. That's typically what they say, okay? So how you get to how many units you need to close, how many homes you need to close, is first thing, what is your company dollar and royalty cap? Does anybody know our cap and our company dollar? $200,000? It's twenty-two. Oh, it's a company dollar. Well, Louis, you've been here since Jesus. So <laughs> so it was 18 when they first opened the door. So anybody came through the door at yeah. when we first opened our doors, you got the inaugural um, cap. And there's only a couple of people that are here that are on, like Diana and Jennifer have been here since the very beginning. And, and uh, Coronado have been here since the very beginning. So they're on that 18. Everybody else... After that, I think it was like three months, then it was, then it's 22, okay? So it's 22 plus 3,000, that's our royalty cap. So that's the number you put there for company dollar and royalty cap, 25,000, okay? Now, you have to estimate what are gonna be your business expenses. We talked about this a little bit. What are your business expenses? We already, he already said board dues, right? If you're a part of DAOR, you know you're paying 1,050, pretty much, give or take. Right? Supra, you're paying about 15 to 17 a month, right? Um, what else? You got your office fees, those go in there, that's $75 a month. Okay. Um, business cards, postcards. Supra is your access, your electronic key to open up the blue boxes. Yeah, absolutely. House signs, that is absolutely a business expense. <laughs> yes, open house signs and for sale signs, right? Those are both business expenses. Okay, what else? What else? Trainings, thank you. We just talked about being growth-based, so your cost of training. Mike Ferry, yes. You guys, I take all the trainings. I take all the trainings. I spend thousands of dollars a year training. I've always done that my entire career. My mother is always like, what are you going now? What are you doing now? And I'm like, well, I'm going to this conference. I'm going to this conference. And again, one of the reasons why I took the, the, the team leader role, you grow. One of our bold laws is your business expands at the rate that you do. Your business grows to the, to the extent that you do. So you've got to be growth minded in order for your business to grow. That makes sense? Okay. Um, gas, absolutely. 
Absolutely, Claudia. So all those expenses, you've got to estimate, and you're going to put that number there. For newer agents, typically, it's, it's less than 10 grand your first year for newer agents because you're not spending a bunch on postcards. You're not spending a bunch on all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of us are doing ads. Some of us are doing a lot of different, we're buying leads and all that kind of stuff. That number could be up. I have an assistant, right? So my number is going to be higher than your number. So put your number there and then count. And then you're going to add up the net income goal, the company dollar and royalty cap and your business expense. That's your total gross commission income. That's how much you need to make, right? In order to make that 100,000, in order to net it, to take it home. Because you got to cover the cap, you got to cover mm -hmm. your business expenses, right? That makes sense? All right, give me a number, whose number? Anybody got a number? For the total gross commission income? 145. 145. Okay, let's, let's roll with it. 145, your average commission. How do we calculate average commission? Anybody know? Eileen, email, average commission. Um, purchase price divided by the percentage. So purchase price. So let's be simple. Let's use 6%. I mean, let's use, uh, you, you see how I got 6%. I'd say it's so easy. It's just, it just flows off the tongue. 6%. Uh, let's use 600000 all right? That's our purchase price. You've got to have your average purchase price. If you don't know what your average purchase price is because you just got the business, it's okay. Be conservative. Use six hundred six fifty. If you're working in this market in Downey, it's going to be around there or higher. But here's the deal that I know, and Martha knows this, and Eileen knows this. Um, Shatana probably knows this. We go, and, and definitely Marlena um, and, and Louise, we go all over. In Adriana, we go all over. So I could be representing a million dollar property, and then trust me, in Long Beach is three seventy five on a one bedroom lot, on a, on a one bedroom um, condo. Literally, I did it last year, and I was like, "Wow, this is crazy, <laughs> right?" But that's, and then you take that average, right? <laughs> so if you're working all over, and you know you're you're not going to be geographically located you know that you're going to be relationship located because you're going to go where the business is then be conservative and let's use 600 so 600 let's use because i'm sorry we're seeing lower commissions are we not i'm seeing lower commissions i'm not necessarily seeing 2.5 all the time i'm certainly not seeing 30. so let's go with 2.25 so what is 600 times 2.25 percent well let's see what you mean okay Thirteen thousand five hundred, six hundred times two point two five. Okay. Point yeah. Yeah. It's thirteen five. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. Thirteen five. Okay. So now what do we do? We take thirteen five divided into your total gross commission income. The one forty five divided by thirteen five is what. Did you say 143 divided by 13? Because Juan's number is 145. 145 divided by 135. Divided by 13.5. 13.500. 10.74. You need to close 10 and a half transactions. So 11 transactions. You need to close 11 transactions. You guys see how the math goes? Okay. This is really simple math. But I do understand that it might seem complicated. So if it does, holler at me. Okay. Because I don't want you to think, oh my God, I don't get it. What's wrong with me? No, it's not a big deal. We've been doing this for years. I've been teaching this for years, you guys. I am so not a math person, but I can do math on my commission like nobody's business. <laughs> and I can do math on loan numbers and stuff. People are like, my oh, God, you're so good at math. I'm like, yeah, okay. When I was in high school, that was my thing. Like I couldn't do math. And now I'm in a business where it's required. And guess what? Brandy can all of a sudden do math. Mm -hmm. Mindset, right? People tell you you're not good at something, you tend to believe them. Right? I have <clears throat> can I have I ask a question? Yes, I know please. this is okay. Thank you so much. I'm like, are these is this scripted? Who told you to 
do the scenario for six hundred thousand dollars. I'm just curious because mm -hmm. that sounds exactly like my scenario in two thousand and four when I purchased my first property and it was going for six sixty and I got it down to six hundred. And my awesome. income my income was minus rental income was around one forty. 140 something you said so you guys like it's like if you were opening my file up minus the <laughs> rental income for my other properties so that's well, what i'm like no it's not it, it, well it actually is scripted because... and Keller williams did do my transaction back then oh, but they only they did it because i wanted to be truthfully honest the reason why they did it if I drove up there, I found the property. No one showed me. I didn't have a real estate agent to show me. I found the property myself and I wanted the property. So I allowed them to double list it. I knew oh. they would accept my offer if they're making double the commission. Right. So they reduced the price. They We reduced the purchase price mm -hmm. um, by being 30 to 40,000 to 600,000 even. And right. then they double dipped on their condition. So they were able to convince the seller to reduce their purchase price or the right. sales price. Right. Because they were gonna, they want, like I said, agent. That agent wanted to double dip on his condition, so he wanted to represent both of us, and I got the house. That's wonderful. And but yes, that's what I'm saying. But that's 2004. That was before my phone lines were hacked. Mm -hmm. See what happened? Right. I hear so you. It, it is very, very easy for you to make really good income on your first, on your I first agree. couple of years, as long I as you come, have a good trainer, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's mentors. It's our mentors. Our mentors are there, our backbones. Yeah. So anybody else? So everybody got Shatana. I missed the total gross commission income. Okay, so that's your net income goal, whatever that top number is, plus your company dollar and royalty cap, which is twenty five thousand, plus your business expenses. That's the total. That's your total gross commission income. That's two thousand and four. We're in two thousand four. Yeah. Gotcha. Go ahead. Um, your average commission. How do you get your average? So we just so that's take take your purchase price, your average purchase price. So that's six hundred thousand. We're just gonna use a number, right? Okay, we're just six, gonna we're just gonna say your average purchase price is six hundred thousand. Okay. And we're gonna divide that by, or I'm sorry, you can times it by your average commission rate which we said was 2.25, because that's what we're seeing, somewhere between two and two and a half right now. And that should give you 13.5. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to divide that into your total gross commission income. And that's going to tell you the number of units that you need to close in order to make your net income goal. So take that 13.5 divided into your GCI. Which you said what again, sorry. Well, your GCI is based on your numbers that you put here. So it's based on 125 to 10, but 135. Mm -hmm. okay. 10. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions about that? We're good? Okay. Please. Yes. Every Keller Williams, you pay a royalty fee. A, I call it a franchise fee because people are more familiar with that term. Um, and it's $3,000. That's not something we can play with. We don't see a dime of it as a market center. It all goes to Keller Williams International. Okay. And it's 6%, but the cap is $3,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's why you add it to the 22 or whatever your, you know, your market center cap is. Or you could do one ten million dollar deal. Absolutely, Oscar. Take the year off. Right. Take the year off. Right. Take the year off. We're done. Take a fork in it. Any ahas from this exercise? There should be some some good ahas. Give me an aha from this exercise. <laughs> Please. When um, your business expands at, at the rate that you do, uh, I mean I. It's something that you know, but I don't know mm -hmm. that I that and thought about that for you. And um, yeah, I think also when I started, I'm, I'm glad to see this break out like visually because when I started, I already knew I wanted to make 90 something thousand a year to pay off my house. I have like this goal to pay it off in six years. Okay. And mm -hmm. so I just feel like this is a reminder of my goal. Mm -hmm. I love it. 
Just a reminder of your goals. I love you. Eric, you have not talked. You have to spend money to make money. All right. You got to spend money to make money. Investment. Exactly. Figure out how to not do that money. Well, and one of Gary Keller's rules is lead with revenue. Mm -hmm. Right? So I would say you do have to spend money to make money, but at the same time in real estate, that could look like sweat equity. Right? That could look like door knocking <laughs> instead of you sending out a bunch of postcards. No, you're the mailman. You go do it. Right? That's what it could look like. It could look like doing open houses every single weekend, right? So it can it can look like instead of using a mojo dollar that costs you $149, using them fat things. <laughs> That's what it looks like. That's sweat equity. So yes, you do have to spend a little bit because you have to pay for your board dues and everything like that. But at the same time, watch that because if you spend that sweat equity, you don't necessarily have to spend so much, right? Uh, wonderful. Thank you, guys. Anybody? Um, let's see. Sarah, do you have an aha for me? She's probably like, I got this baby. <laughs> My hands are full. I think one very important aha uh -huh is to understand now that I'm not, I'm not only a real estate agent, but we're also business owners. Absolutely. And there will be a time in our transaction that we need to understand how we operate our business. Yes. So in the future, when we grow yes. as big as we want to be, uh, we can explain it to somebody else. Absolutely. Right? Thank and you. Know, I present the technology platform. <laughs> That's the first question I kind of ask, yeah. right? How do you run your business so I can make it digital? Put it in a piece of paper for me, and I'll feel free to make it digital and come out. Gotcha. Right. Absolutely. Yes, you have to run your business like a business, which is actually where we get <clears throat> caught up, right? Because we run it like a side hustle instead of like a business. And then that breeds more confusion in your business. So let's talk about embracing your job, okay? So we're going to recognize your role as a fiduciary for clients, apply those six core competencies of the business, and we're going to review the success. So we've got homework already, right? One page of homework already. So let's talk about the six core competencies competencies of a business. Number one, Claudia, what does it say up there? Absolutely. Got to lead, generate, capture, and convert to appointments. Number two, present to buyers and sellers and get agreement. Number three, show buyers and market sellers, write and negotiate contracts. Number four, number five, contribute to the sale or coordinate, I'm sorry, the sale to closing. And number five, and number six, manage the money. Those are the six things, actions that you've got to be really good at in this business. Those are your core competencies. And that's in, you're now in section number two. We're now in, in section number two. So keep going if you guys don't see it. Okay. Now, section number two is still under number one. Because <laughs> we combined two sessions. You guys, this was going to be a four-month undertaking if we did one class a week. And I was just like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> yes. I was like, I don't want to do that to you guys because I know you want to learn and you don't want it to take four months to get there. So let's land the plane. Right. All right. So these are our six core competencies. Number one, lead, generate, capture, and convert to appointments. This, if you did nothing else, you guys, it's number one for a reason. It is number one for a reason. Because most of us, when we get into this business, we don't understand that. I hear this a lot. I love houses. I like to look at houses. I like to tour houses. I'm like, that's beautiful. <laughs> and I don't want to bust your bubble, baby girl. But that's not what it takes to sell a home. You've got to lead generate. No one tells us when we get into this business that we have to be salespeople. They really don't. Right? You got to know those contracts. You got to be able to talk to people, build relationships. They're not telling you you have to be a salesperson and yet you must be a salesperson because you have to be able to close the deal. You have to be able to ask for the business. And there are so many different ways to do it. So many different ways to do it. But 
you got to do it. Okay. Um, capture and convert to appointments, right? Lead generate first and then be able to close them to get them to the table so that you can meet with them face to face. That's what capture and convert to appointment is, right? So that you can actually sit down and have that buyer consultation and that listing presentation. That's a core competency. You've got to practice that every single day. We are the only, the only industry out there, salespeople, that we practice on our clients and not on each other. You would never see Steph Curry get out there without being prepared. He just wouldn't, right? And what did it take to get him to where he is? The man was in the gym early in the morning, late at night, to be who he is today. You guys will hear a lot of sports references. That's my jam. So Mookie Betts is another one who I am just enamored with. Love that man. He is on the field taking reps. This man is a golden glover. This man breaks records. And guess what, you guys? He is out there early right now taking reps because they put him at shortstop. He still could do shortstop in his freaking sleep, but he's like, nope, I got to make sure. I got to make sure I can backhand. I got to make, and I told my son this because this was amazing to me. And, and of course he's major league. So they've got technology and all that available to them, right? But he does it in real time. He's not just letting the ball get hit to him and he's just, you know, just taking reps. No, they got a clock. They got a timer that says, this is how fast major league uh, ball gets to the shortstop. And the coach is hitting it in real time. They're timing it. They're timing his throw. Real time practice because how you play is how you play. How you practice is how you play. Don't think that getting into scripts and role play or in, at nine in the morning and you're upset because somebody gave you an objection you couldn't handle. So that's great. That's teaching you. That's sharpening your saw. That's teaching you how to handle it the next time. You should be practicing your buyer presentation, your listing presentation on each other. Right? Because if you don't, you're going to get in front of the client and be like, um, um, you know what you will? You'll get in front of the client instead of like Angie, bless you, being like a boss and handling herself very well. You'll get in front and you'll you'll sink. You won't rise to the challenge because you're not prepared. Because you didn't practice. Number. Yeah. Yes. What do they say? Amateurs practice until they can't. Um, amateurs practice until they get it right. Masters practice until they can't get it wrong. I love it. And I'm going to give you one more sports analogy. Freaking Larry Bird was in a Sprite commercial. The goal in the Sprite commercial was for him to miss the shot. It took him like 25 shots for him to miss it. <laughs> Seriously. He knew he was supposed to freaking miss it and could not miss it. I was like, that's a G. Like, who does that? Like, you're supposed to miss the shot, could not miss it. And I think I'm exaggerating. I think it was like 15. But is that not amazing? Because he is so used to making that shot time and time again. He has practiced that. He has mastered that skill. He could not get it wrong. In his brain, that don't work. <laughs> that don't equate. Me missing don't equate. And if you know anything about Larry Bird, you don't, he don't miss. It was crazy, right? So we've got to take that same mentality to our business. We got to be about practice. I'm sorry. Uh, conversations and real play in the morning should not be empty. You guys should be clamoring to get in there because it's your skill. You're mastering your skill, right? And if it's not there, it should be with each other in here, mm -hmm. having a partner that you're practicing back and forth. And it doesn't have to take all day. It could be quick. And we're going to do that. We're going to get, we're going to get into some um, accountability partners. Present to buyers and sellers and get agreement. Is that not important? Right? You get them to the table and can't close them so that they sign the contract, sign the buyer referee agreement, right? The listing agreement. That's a core competency. You've got to master that. Show buyers, right? There it is. <laughs> Show buyers and market sellers. 
show your buyer's properties and market your seller's listings. You've got to become a master at that. Being able to show properties, be able to market the seller's listing. Write and negotiate contracts. We talked about that. That has to be your skill. You get paid big bucks for that, for not making a mistake, for protecting your clients. Okay? Mm -hmm. You get paid big bucks for that. Coordinate the sale to closing. This is huge. Who said it earlier? Like, this is the biggest transaction or the biggest investment your clients are going to make. I heard that. Right? It is, you guys. Buying a $750,000 home, what else are they going to buy worth $750,000? Exactly. Or $800,000 or nine hundred. dollars Right? So this is huge for them. You've got to be there holding their hands, letting them know what's going on from start to finish. What it's should really they true. expect? I'm sorry, who's, is someone talking? <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. Um, I, I hold a weekly call with my clients with my buyers and my sellers. We have a weekly call. So every week, it doesn't matter if I don't have nothing to say. If I don't have an update, we get on the phone and we have a set time. And that's that's when I get on the phone with them. And normally they bring people in, like my, my older clients, they'll bring a daughter in, they'll bring somebody in to ask additional questions. They love it. They know they're going to get me on the phone every single week, no matter what. And they love it. And we talk and shoot the breeze. It just takes 15 minutes. And I do that every week. And I shoot them a quick email recap. Right? That's giving them service. That's being there for them. Right? That's showing up a little bit different. Coordinating for them. Manage the money. What does this mean? Anybody got any ideas about what manage the money means? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I think of that savings account for tax. Mm-hmm. The savings account for tax, absolutely, Louis. There's no how much you make, how much you save. How much you make, how much you sweat as you say. I would say for our clients, it's also making sure that we are helping them make a smart investment. Right? Helping them if it's an investment property, helping them make a smart investment. If it's their home, helping them make a smart investment. I showed property last night and um, they loved it, right? And we're in the house and I'm I'm looking at their new clients. I'm looking Gosh. at them. And I'm looking okay. at them and I'm like the agents would be like guys when they see a girl they want. I want to see oh. another girl. So they would that guy's in tune her. Like, well, we're talking about manage the money. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was talking to somebody else. That is too funny. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was telling them, I was like, like, keep it in, like. I know you like it, but let's not show all the enthusiasm, right? Because we got to negotiate. That'll take away my negotiating power. Um, so we get outside and they're like, we want to make an offer. And I'm like, first thing I'm going to do is run the comps. Because just because they are asking $7.99 doesn't mean it's worth $7.99. And guess what, you guys, it's not. I ran the comps, the highest in the area is $7.50, and it's fully remodeled. Now, this one has a pool, so there's compensating mm -hmm. factors. But that one's not fully remodeled. It needs work, mm -hmm. right? So now I'm telling them the best offer I would make is $775. I would take a little bit off that. Now, are we in a competitive environment right now? Yes, right? Yes, we are. So do we have to be careful with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. We call the agent first to find out if we're the first offer that they're going to receive, right? So we are. So that makes a difference in my offer. And I told them, if we have to be competitive, then the highest I would go is like 9, 10, 9, 15. Why? Because the appraisal, if there's nothing in the area that is sold for that, why would an appraiser give us that value? Now, there are compensating factors. It's got a huge den that seems to be uh, with square footage, okay? So there are compensating factors. But again, I have to educate my clients so that I can protect their money because they're going to do an appraisal. Mm -hmm. You know how much these appraisals cost these days? Seven, eight hundred dollars Yes! Mm -hmm. Like $1,800. Eight years ago, five fifty. Mm -hmm. You're now like $750, $800. They're a lot, okay? <laughs> and 
the inspection is what another four fifty five, another four fifty between three fifty and five hundred, right? They could be out of pocket a thousand dollars, and then they find out that it doesn't appraise, and you didn't mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. Sellers don't want to negotiate, right? That's a problem, but it's a problem if you didn't educate your client that this could be an issue. Do you understand, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer? Yes, I do. Okay, great. You still want to make the offer? Yes, let's do it. They will right. remember that you had that conversation, I promise you. They will remember. Exactly. But you know what? I think just as that, make it accepting the offer, I think honestly, even buyers should know exactly. I mean, they read this contract and they see that they could be representing buyers and sellers like how the agent did on my property. But I simply asked for that dollar amount because that was my what my max spending limits were. I wanted to spend no more than $600,000 on a property. Right. But I'm also savvy in the business where I knew the agent was going to prioritize my, list, my offer because I allowed him to be my agent as well as the seller's agent. So right. me knowing that he's going to want to double his commission, he's going to probably, you know, present my offer, probably the first and foremost of all the other offers because he's representing both of us, which is not necessarily beneficial for the seller and the seller may not know that. So I think just honesty that the seller just knows like the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Like we have a great buyer, but he's representing both, you know, my agent is representing the, both the buyer and seller. They also have to know that they're representing both people. So they're going to have both interests, not just one common party. So I think if we're just honest, because sometimes these, these sellers, they don't, I mean, we kind of think of everybody as our best friend or your child, right? You're explaining it to them because you want their best interest because they sign these disclosures and not knowing what they sign. They're right. just trusting you as an agent. And, and that's, that's where what the education I think comes in, Caroline, is we have to mm -hmm. we have to be there to educate them. And and dual agency can be very tricky. Um, it can be very tricky. However, that's where again the agent has to be on the up and up, right? To be able to play both sides of the fence. Um, and I'm doing it right now on a house in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, yeah, and, but we know that agents right. agents want the most money. They want the highest paycheck like everybody else. We that all that can't be your driving factor. Exactly. That, no, that not can't mine. Be your driving factor. Yeah, but that's we have to let the seller correct. Right. You have to tell the buyers that you know just because they're making more money on the yeah. other side, or they're you know you have to get really advice from a couple of agents to see really truly who's telling you the whole truth, right? That's my well, opinion. Unless you have a trusted advisor like you guys, like we all want to be. Yeah. Right. We all want to be that trusted advisor. I don't my clients don't call anybody. They might call Uncle Joe because that's their family member, but they typically don't call anybody. Right. They trust me. They were referred to me by their best friend and they trust me. So if I tell them this is this, then they trust me. And we are serious. And actually, hang on, Caroline, because we're going to get to this and I got to keep moving. Um I'm, I got to keep moving. We're going to get to that because what you hit on is being a fiduciary versus a functionary. And we're going to get there. Um, and we only have a few minutes. How long do I have? 10 minutes or so to get there. Okay. Oh, I have no time. So hang on. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to do this real quick. Functionary versus fiduciaries. Okay. Because that's what really Caroline is talking about. Be the fiduciary. Okay. And we're talking about managing the money, all right? Being the fiduciary. So we're gonna blow through some of this. Oh, okay, I'm there. I'm at the end of the What? Let's go. I'm long-winded, you guys, so just forgive me. I'm not next. Uh, Adriana is next, so you guys will not be long. Um, but be the fiduciary. So what are we talking about? What we are talking about is having your best, having the best interest of your client over your own. Looking out for their best interest over your commission check. You don't matter in this transaction. You don't. Your opinion does not matter in this transaction. It's so funny. You'll you will you will get when you're going through a house, buyers will say, Well, Brandy, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what do you think? Now, I used to go in a house mm -hmm. and I used to tell them, oh, this is a lovely master bedroom or what do they call it now? What do they call it now? Some sunroom room or whatever. No, right some, what primary. is it? Primary. 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 Thank you. 
primary bedroom. This is a wonderful this is master bedroom. This is a wonderful <laughs> master bedroom. This is a wonderful, and I would tell them, oh my God, you guys, look at this flooring. This flooring is so pretty. I'm giving them my opinion of what I like, my taste, right? That mm -hmm. has nothing to do with them. You've got to uncover what they like. My daughter is, is a realtor, um, and I we had some clients. She wanted me to go with her. She did the exact same thing I used to do. She's new. She went in there. She's like, oh, my God, look at this closet. This closet is really nice. Oh, my God, look at this floor. She was just doing it. So we get in the car to go to the, and, and they liked it. We get in the car and go to the next one. I was like, you're sick. <laughs> and she's like, what am I doing? She's totally like her mother. She's all amped up. What am I doing? I was like, don't nobody care about what you like. Like, stop that. I was like, you got to find out what they like. Ask them what they think about the closet. Ask them what they think about the floor. Mm -hmm. Ask them what they think about the price in the neighborhood. Right? She's a boss. So next property, she walks in. She, I could tell she liked it, but she was like, what do you guys think about the vaulted ceiling? <laughs> like, get it, girl. <laughs> they call proud, right? She was like, what do you think about this room? Is it large enough for you and your needs? I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right. Very, very proud. So she did it all through the house. She was just, what do you think about this? And what do you think about this? Is this enough room for you? What is this dining room? Do you, where do you spend most of your time? I was like, oh my God. So did a great job, but they were talking. And I, we got in the car and I said, you see the difference? You talk the first time. They talk the second time. And they were just telling her stuff. And she was writing, she was writing it down. I said, you didn't even know that some of the things that they preferred. It just came out. And it never would if you're talking. Right. Being a fiduciary, however, is also looking at taking this a step further. A seller calls you and they say, I want to list my property. Right. <laughs> it's you being able to say, Mr. Seller, are we sure we want to do this? Are we sure we want to do this? Because looking at the numbers, it might not make sense to sell right now given where you're going. That's being a true fiduciary. Do you get the deal right then? No, but are you going to gain a friend for freaking life and somebody who's going to refer you business? Absolutely. And they're going to know when it's time to sell, they would never go to anybody else. I don't care if you didn't keep in touch. They would never go to anybody else mm -hmm. because they know that you put them in front of you. That's a fiduciary. Right. You're always looking out for them. You uncover something that is in the house. Right. That the seller might have slipped up and said a fiduciary tells the buyer. Not keeps it to themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Louie. I'm sorry. Capital gains. capital gains. Yeah. Telling your investors about you capital right gains. Hey, yeah. Full disclosure. It's full disclosure. And that's where a lot of us as agents, and that's quite frankly, all these lawsuits that we're getting into, it's because of because the sellers don't feel that there was transparency. Now, do I think it's, yeah, I got my opinions. I'm going to keep them to myself. Because in our agreement, it actually is there. California has the largest, the longest agreements almost in any other state because we fully disclose things. And if you guys have read the agreement, it says it over and over and over again, a lot of this stuff, right? But it clearly says in there that you're paying buyer compensation at this rate, right? However, they felt like it was a done deal, like they couldn't negotiate it, right? So they feel like we weren't being fully transparent that it could be negotiated. And if you guys been in this business long enough, um, I'll say it. I definitely get in there. We get the listing agreement. I'll be like, okay, my commission is 5%. It is negotiable. I say that. Or 6%. It is negotiable. And then half of that goes to the buyer's agent. It's a, it's a, it's a given. Half of that goes to the buyer's agent. Now they will say, oh, okay. So I'm paying half to the buyer's agent. Yes. Okay. Confirm. Right? Now, what they're saying is they didn't have to do that. They didn't have to pay the buyer's agent. Okay, so that's why now we're going backward and now we've got to evolve and now it's got to change so that the seller understands what their rights are and they, they're they in the driver's seat of that money. They're in the driver's seat of our commission. 
that's why it's so important mm -hmm. that we know how to articulate our value, right? Because we want to be earners of the two and a half, three percent, right? We don't want to go backwards. We want to keep going forward, okay? And as a listing agent, you want to be able to communicate why that seller should pay buyer compensation, right? Because you're basically going to eliminate 80% of the market if we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. It would be crazy for you to shoot yourself in the foot like that, okay? So everybody got a fiduciary versus a functionary. A functionary is transactional. That's what a functionary is. Oh, thank you. A functionary is transactional. All they care about is the transaction. They do the transaction, they close, they're done. Hi, bye, Mr. Seller, here's your key, or Mr. Buyer, here's your keys, thank you very much, and they're out. That's, that's a functionary. They just do the job, no extras, no bells and whistles. We want to be fiduciaries. Fiduciaries refer their kids to you, right? When you're a fiduciary, you get referrals like Martha's getting. You get referrals from your past client's children, right? So that's a fiduciary. All right. So we talked about manage the money. Because we're over time, nothing else about your business will have as big an impact on it as the number of leads you have. We talked about that, right? That's number one. <clears throat> so I love this. Accountable people achieve results others can only dream of. So being accountable, you guys, will allow you to have results that only others are going to dream about. Okay. So we got to choose an accountability partner. What I need to do is I need to take a picture of everybody online so we can we can have accountability partners so i know you two are going to be accountability yeah, partners <laughs> all right for those of you in this office um turn around get accountability partner this is the person that you are going to role play with these two over here <laughs> accountability part these two here you win. Oh, you have an accountability partner up there? Okay. <laughs> Write each other's numbers down. Got it? Okay. Write each other's numbers down. My online people, we are going to get you guys um, partnered up. If you could do me a favor, put your names all in the chat for me. Put your names all in the chat for me. Um, and then that way I will download the chat and I can I can have a, a transcript of it so I have everybody's names. Because if I take my phone away, it's holding the, the line up. <laughs> All right. Make sure you're writing each other's numbers down. If you do not have an um, accountability partner, we will pair you with someone. So you guys are going to be checking in with each other at least three times a week. You're checking in with each other at least three times a week. Just a quick call. 15 minutes. It should be role play. It should be a quick role play. So it's not getting on the phone like, hey, girl, what you doing? How you doing? What you doing today? How you feeling? None of that. It's getting on the phone and saying, hi, this is Eric. And I'm with Kelly Williams, Huntington Beach. Um, you know, whatever, whatever it is, if she's going to be, um, if you're role playing like, uh, friends and family, then you're going to use the Ford method, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, right? How's the family? How is the job going? You know, how's it treating you? Are you guys all back from COVID? So did you guys have any plans coming up, you know, for the summertime? So, you know, that's, that's what you're doing. You're, you're just bored. Family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, okay? And then when they say, and they will say, how are things going with you? <laughs> things are going spectacular, great, whatever language you want to use, right? And I, I don't know if I told you, I'm a realtor with Keller Williams. And um, 
just out of curiosity, do you happen to know anybody that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate that I can help? I mean, you asked, so I might as well ask you back, right? Yeah. Play with it. These are people, Ford is used on people you know, like, and trust, okay? Ford is used on your sphere of influence, okay? Or people that you have good connection with, all right? So that's what you're going to do. You're going to get on the phone. Did you do your homework? Check, it, check in with each other. Did you do your homework? And then start your role play. And just go into it. I promise you, it will only take 15 minutes. You don't have to keep asking all the questions and going down the rabbit hole, okay? So how you give feedback quickly. You're going to sandwich it. Don't be don't don't do the thing where you're like, oh my God, that was horrible. No, please don't do it. We want everybody to win. So what you're gonna do is you sandwich it, give them something that was great about what they did, right? And we can all find something great. I'm sorry, but we can all find something great. I've heard some horrible role play, and yet we we can find something great. Well, I got something great. We we had to give each other phone numbers, uh -huh. and Kim pulled up the uh QR code yes. from the command, command uh, app and maybe copy it to get her number. Everybody should be doing it. Absolutely. I love it. You just had an aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it. You can pull it right up. Absolutely. I learned that at Family Reunion just this past year. I learned it right now. Yep. <laughs> I love it. And pull up the QR code in, in your app, in your KW Command app. And then you can just scan it and it'll put their phone right number. Here. Your, your All their contact information everything right in your phone. Yep. Um, okay, so yeah. you're going to get on the phone, right? Oh, sandwich it. That's where I left off. Sandwich it. You got to give them a good thing, and then you're going to give them constructive criticism. What can they improve upon? Okay? And then a good thing. Sandwich it. <laughs> All right? You're going to end on a good note. All right? So a good thing, something they can improve upon, and then something good. Marlena, I loved your energy. You had great energy. Okay. Oh. So next time, I think that you should practice that part, that closing <laughs> part, right? Um, because it needs to be more smooth or it sounds a little bit like you're reading instead of being natural. Um, however, after that, I could tell you were totally smiling because you got into it and I, I felt your energy. I felt the vibe. It got really good. That's it. Okay. You just want to give something positive, something in, in the terms of constructive criticism, and then also something good. All right, we got it? Mm -hmm. Choose your days that you guys are going to get together and your times. Put it in your calendar. It's an appointment. None of you would miss a listing appointment. None of you would miss a buyer consultation. <laughs> Don't miss this. Are these the questions that we're going to be asking? Or is it accountability? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. It's a, it's a guide, so you can. Or you could be brief and do like I said. No, you no, it's not before third. No, yes, you should have one call before Thursday's class. We got two days in between here. One call. No, one call. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Thank you guys so much. Take something. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Please take something. Um. All right. Let's see. Yes. No, go ahead. What is it that we know? Good question. So I'm just asking, how do we know what's going to be the dialogue? The dialogue is based on who you're calling. So you choose the dialogue. You're a new agent. More than likely, you're going to be calling friends and family. So you should be using the sphere dialogue. SOI, sphere of influence dialogue. There is a, if you need the scripts, let me know. But didn't you get the red binder? Did you get a red box? Okay, so you need the red, you need the script. So I'll send you the, the sphere of influence. Okay, but it's four. That's what you're using. Family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Okay. It's in the red binders and stuff? Yes. So how do I get the red binders? Uh, we have oh, one down here. Okay. Yeah, we have one down here. Randy, can we pick up a binder tomorrow, first thing in the morning? Yes, you absolutely can, my dear. Okay. Yes, I think we have to Yes. yes. No, it's not that red one. It's under there. So pick your time. Keep your time. The dialogue is based on what you, who you intend to call. If you intend to call commercial agents, practice the commercial script. 
for commercial folks, right? Yeah. If you intend to call expires, practice an expired script. All right. And yes, you should have one in between now and Thursday, one call between you guys as as uh, partners. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to be clear about is you see this daily success system. This is what you're supposed to be doing daily. Calling 10 people daily. Calling 10 people daily. That doesn't mean you're going to talk to them, but you should be calling 10 people daily. Okay. Adding 10 contacts, five to 10. I'm going to put it like this because I know for some of you, these are baby steps. So five to 10 calls a day, five to 10 contacts added to your database. And at least two personal notes written a day, two. So make that note, five to 10 calls, five to 10 contacts added, and two personal notes a day. Guess what, guys? I want to see the log. When you come to check in, it, it's got to be written down who you called every day. <laughs> That's accountability. That's what you signed up for. You signed up to be great. You signed up to make some money. You don't make money without being uncomfortable <laughs> and making calls. What what do you mean, babe? I'm sorry. Yeah. Two personal notes. So when you when you talk to somebody, you're gonna send them a personal note that says, "Hey, Letty, it was so great talking to you today. Thank you for your time. I look forward to talking with you soon." That's it. Yeah. I will say a lot of my business was built on personal notes. That's why I'm so passionate about personal notes. People freaking love them. In this day and age of emails and all that stuff, to get something in the mail. Thank you so much, Marco. Um, to get something in the mail, they love it. So do that. When you talk to your customers, mm -hmm. do you make one call to all the customers or just one to each individual customer? <laughs> you said every once a week you talk to each of your clients. Yes. Okay. You, you talk to them all at once or you talk to them Oh, no. Time? They each have their dedicated time. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. No. What? Oh, absolutely not like a group call. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Miss Jackson. Miss <laughs> Jackson, Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Okay, what's your issue? What's your issue? No, they would kill me. <laughs> I'll be a circus. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging in there. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my Zoomers, for hanging in there. You guys are awesome. And I will. Did you guys put your names in the chat? Thank you. Okay, good. Yes, we did. Perfect. Thank you, Diana. This is put my name on the chat. So we write down the number of conversations out of ten. Um, five to ten. So you write down who you called. So I gotta have five names on there. Okay, have a good night, honey. Brandy, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you, Brandy. So then, Brandy, it's your homework, so one piece of work. Yes. And then, uh,